Greetings folks and welcome to the Laptop GPU Undervolting Guide that covers the Pascal 10 series GPUs and newer. Rather than asking if your GPU is compatible, just try it out for yourself and you'll know. A couple things you'll want to download straight away, the first being MSI Afterburner. You're also going to want to set this up appropriately. If you do not know what this software is or how to set it up, Please follow the tutorial linked in the description below so you understand what this software is before we start to manipulate the frequency and voltage curve. We also need Hardware Info 64. Just opening up the Sensors tab and what we want to have here is access to see how much voltage and wattage our GPU is pulling. In this case, scroll down to the bottom and right here where it says Maximum, this is going to give us the information that we need. Now, right now, we are idling, and I am recording, so we are going to be pulling around 33 watts from this GPU. Pro tip, do not run this software right here, MSI Afterburner, when you're running on battery power, as it will constantly ping the GPU. This should be used for when you are gaming or just generally plugged in to the laptop's power supply unit. With MSI Afterburner open, you want to put your cursor right over this hardware monitor and press Control F. This is our voltage frequency curve. Now right now we are doing this on an RTX 2070 Max-Q, but what most people do not realize is that the RTX 2070 Max Performance, which is a 115 watt laptop GPU, and the desktop variant, which is 175 watts, and then everything else in between, well, this voltage and frequency curve is the exact same. What limits the power is the BIOS flashed to the video card. But because this voltage and frequency curve is very generic per the GPU, means it's going to get a little bit more voltage than the graphics card technically needs. With the end goal is to ultimately eliminate power limit throttling for our GPU, we first need to understand what the rated frequency for this GPU was from NVIDIA. A simple Google search for the RTX 2070 Max-Q TDP and the RTX 2070 Max-Q specs will reveal graphs similar to this. Here we can see that the rated boost clock is between 885 and 1080 and 1185 and 1305. This likely means that this is for the 80 watt variant and this is for the 90 watt variant. Now, my 2070 Max-Q definitely boosts beyond this, but it shows a great deal of power limit throttling. As a matter of fact, the unit that I have, if it hits 1305 or more, it's absolutely power limit throttled at this point under most scenarios. Moving over to the 1660 Ti, you can see our boost range of the desktop variant, the max performance laptop variant between 1455 and 1590, and the max Q at 1140 to 1335. Now again, you will see the frequency go beyond these numbers per which version you have inside of your system, but you will also get power limit throttling when you see it push past these numbers as well, which also means it's getting a lot more voltage than it needs, and you're getting a frequency that you're not actually able to take advantage of. And this applies all the way back to Pascal with the 1080 inside of a laptop, the 1080 Max-Q, we have the 1070 laptop, of course the Max-Q version of that, so on and so forth. I'm only showing you guys a fraction of the numbers. Very easy to Google search this for your own GPU inside of your laptop. Now with the Hardware Info 64 tab open, with running everything stock inside the system, you can see that our maximum voltage of our 2070 Max-Q hit 0 .950 at 102 watts. That means it was power limiting itself past 100 watts in this scenario. Maximum temperatures here were 86 degrees Celsius, and thermal throttling on this GPU is at 87. So we have already reached the maximum of what this GPU can be capable of, and in my opinion, that's too hot for me, and I'm going to show you guys how to make it run a little bit cooler with this tutorial now. Now, as I said before, this is a 2070 Max-Q, which means I already know we're going to see power limit throttling within this particular chassis based on the wattage that it can pull that I'm comfortable with it pulling is going to be somewhere around the 1300 megahertz mark. So now that we know that, we can look at our voltage frequency curve editor, and we can see right here, 1300 megahertz is really at the lowest point from the factory of the voltage curve which means I can do one of two things. I can either start right here, 
and take every single one of these little dots and drop it all the way down for it to make a straight line. In doing so, it will look just like this. And what you get here is the frequency, in this case, capping out at around 1290. It's never going to be quite exact to what you click on. And the voltage right below that, in this case, 0.694. I was able to game on this for many hours, never exceeding 80 degrees Celsius. That's a six degree Celsius drop. And that's actually not very good as my chassis is not too thermally efficient. So expect a little bit more should your chassis be capable to extract a lot of that heat. Now, when it's set up just like this with a straight line, you are going to have a cap at what you put right here. That means it will not get any more voltage or frequency beyond this point. If you start to curve this up, then it is going to follow that curve until it is power limit throttled. But with a line straight across just like this is kind of nice because it will cap itself right here, as you can see, at 0.694. 80 degrees Celsius, and in my case, it capped our 2070 Max-Q at just under 80 watts. But because of this straight line, it allows the frequency and voltage to drop back down when it's not under load. And as you can see here at idle, we were at 0.594 volts. The temperature was dropping. This was right after I had alt tabbed out of the game. Of course, the frequency is back down to a typical idle frequency of around 300 megahertz. This could be a nice quality of life for you. A very simple solution, however, and it's the one that I highly recommend you starting with, is just to lock that frequency and voltage so it will be fixed even at idle the only thing that will fluctuate is the wattage so I know on this particular chassis with the lowest being 1305 I need to drop this down to around 1290 in order to get some respectable temperatures and with that little square highlighted I'm gonna push control L and there's gonna be a faint yellow line all the way from top to bottom what this is going to do is lock our frequency at 1290 and our voltage at around 0.7 in order to apply that, I need to back out, press apply, go back into Hardware Info 64, only run the sensor tab, scroll all the way back down. As you can see here, we are locked at 1290 megahertz at just under 0.7 volts. And this is where it will idle. Now our idle wattage is a little bit high. We are recording right now, but nonetheless, this is relatively common. And as you can see here, after gaming for several hours, we have this locked just as stated. The maximum wattage was just under 79 watts, maximum temperature was 79 degrees, and the voltage was just under 0.7. So what this looks like gaming, as you can see, we're at 85 to 86 degrees Celsius, thermal throttling begins at 87. This laptop does a good enough job of keeping us away from that, but nonetheless, this is very high. And now with our frequency and voltage dialed in, we have now dropped the temperature a good six to seven degrees. And as a result, you can oftentimes decrease the temperature of the CPU as well, as most of our gaming laptops have one heat sink trying to do double duty, and that is cooling both CPU and GPU. Now, as you can see here, the frame rate performance did drop a couple FPS. I could easily dial this in a lot closer, but I am running 20 watts less power, and I needed to push it that far in order to really get the best thermal performance from this chassis that is not ultimately that thermally efficient. Here's an external video clip of the RTX 2070 Max Performance 115 watt GPU. And because I had a little bit more thermal headroom, I was able to dial in the voltage and frequency very close to eliminate power limit throttling. Also drop the temperatures quite a bit without compromising performance. This is gonna take a little bit of trial and error, but let me show you what I did. We alt tabbed out, gonna apply the curve. And as you can see here, the curve's gonna look a little bit different, but nonetheless, this little yellow line is clearly present. And you can see that we're at around 1600 megahertz, just a hair underneath. The voltage, I believe, was around 0 0.750, maybe 0 0.8. And when we fast forward here, there it is. Our frame rate performance is right around that 120 to 124 that it was getting before. We no longer have power limit throttling. And of course, if I were to let this sit long enough, you would see around a 10 degree Celsius drop within our GPU temperatures. And of course that can directly affect the CPU in a positive way as well.
So to wrap this up, you're going to need the MSI Afterburner software utility. Link in the description below for a tutorial on how to use that if you are unfamiliar. You're also going to need Hardware Info 64 so you can see what kind of wattage your GPU is pulling and this is going to give you the kind of feedback you need to help you dial in your frequency and voltage curve editor on your particular gaming laptop. That's it folks. Plan the work and work the plan and let me know what kind of numbers you get in the description below.